You're listening to KABC Dodger Talk. Here's Ken Levine, Josh Sushan, and Steve Lyons. We are live from Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia. Final segment of a special edition of pregame Dodger Talk. Ken Levine will join us after the game where we will take your phone calls and we will break down everything that happened from game one of this best of seven National League Championship Series between the Dodgers and the Phillies. The pregame show with Charlie and Rick starts in about 10 minutes. Steve Lyons, as we uh, watch the uh, tarp get taken, or not the tarp, but the uh, the tarps around the batting cage. The Dodgers just came off the field from batting practice, and, of course, they were booed by the Phillies crowd. And Why not? They boo Santa Claus. They I sure did. They sure did. All right, so Derek Lowe starts tonight. Let's say he gets into the sixth inning, maybe the seventh inning, with that good sinker ball. He kept the ball down. Yeah, <laughs> the changeup, a little slider. Exactly. Now Chase Utley and Ryan Howard are due up. Maybe there's a couple guys on. Maybe there's one out. You're Joe Torrey. Who do you go to in your bullpen? Well, I know who you hope he goes to, and I and I and I actually think the same. I I think it's going to be Bimel. I, you know, I know that before the series started in Chicago, uh, that you were hoping that Bimel could get an opportunity to come up in a pressure situation and do the job. Uh, I certainly like his stuff. I think uh, Joe's been used a little differently this year than he had been last year. Uh, Joe was trying to get used to him a little bit. Um, but I, I still think it's Bimal because, as we talked about before, I do believe Quo will be put in a situation where he's not just thrown in there to, you know, to get meaningless outs. But I don't know if it's the big situation from the get-go. I think it's Bimal is the guy who's had the most, most experience and has pitched the most lately. How about this? I agree with you. Uh, Bimal, if it's the middle of an inning, if it's the start of the inning, maybe I go with Quo so he has a little bit more wiggle room. You didn't throw that out there as one of the parameters. You didn't say middle I just of the inning, the parameters. In the beginning. Yeah, see, oh, after if, I give you my answer. If Joe Torrey can change his mind on who his closer is every other day, then I can change the parameters of the situation. I'll grant you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ninth inning. Well, you know what I say? I say that Lowe gets both of those guys out, and you don't have to worry about it. Hey, that's even better. That's definitely even better. It's Cole Hamels against Derek Lowe today in Game 1 National League Championship Series. By the way, tomorrow is a 1.35 starting time on the West Coast. So I think some people are going to be calling in sick tomorrow. Uh, yes, I think they will. I got a question for you. All right. Is it better to be legendary or iconic? Iconic. Then, you know, then I think it's really time for the Dodger fans to re get really excited about this series because I, I, is it possible to be both? Oh, yeah, of course. The iconic legend, Vince Scully, will be on the air here calling the games. I mean, if you're anywhere else in the country, you're not hearing them. No. Nope. Dodger fans? Hearing them call these games, that's amazing. Game, innings one through three, you hear Vin and seven through nine. We've talked about this before. When Vin does the radio for the first three innings during the regular season, it's a simulcast with TV, and he's doing his best so that the TV viewers and the radio viewers get the best of it, but he still has to kind of follow, you know, the director and the shots that are on the TV screen. When he's doing the radio, he can do, he can paint pictures, he can do like he did back at the Coliseum when he was doing exclusively well, radio. Well, there's nobody better in the world that paints a picture of a ball game than Vin Scully. The iconic legend. That's what I think I'm going with. Iconic legend? Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Because if anyone is both, it's Vin. <laughs> yeah. And there's probably a few more adjectives behind there that you could <laughs> throw in, too. I mean, just keep piling them on. But I just think that, you know, the, the, the Dodger fans that are so, the spoiled by that, they get to continue to listen to it. And, and, you know, you're crazy if you're not listening to it on the radio. All right. Biggest impact player on the Dodgers in this series besides Manny Ramirez? James Loney. All right. Because? Well, he's in the middle of that order. He's got to do something. You know, a lot of people talked about Loney's six RBIs, and it was great. But Loney didn't have that great a series. He had the grand slam, which was awesome, and he had the two-run single that drove in a few. Other than that, he didn't really swing the bat all that well. He needs to step it up a little bit more offensively, be a little more uh, consistent through these five to seven games that we might see being played here, and I think he's a big a big reason why they will do well. I'm going to go with Raphael for call. He got his feet wet in those three games. We saw that as each game went on, he got better and better. He had a big bunt single in game two. That helped as part of that five-run rally. Then in game three, he had three hits. He was great defensively. Raphael for call was potential... MVP guy, well, maybe that's a bit of a stretch, but he had an unbelievable month in April. He was the team MVP. We can definitely say that. I think that now he knows that his body is going to hold up. If there was any doubts in the back of his mind, if he can play nine innings, those are gone. I'm going to go with Raphael for call as my main impact player on the Dodgers. What about on the Phillies? Who has to have a huge series for them to win? I think Ryan Howard has to hit the ball. He didn't hit the ball that well uh, in in the first series that they played, and he's kind of an all-or-nothing guy, and he's got to be an all guy for them. I mean, the other guys are going to do the job. They're going to get on base around him. I think it's going to fall on his shoulders to, to have a big series. 
unfortunately, usually in the playoffs, it's the big guys that you have to really dance around and other guys beat you. But to me, it's, it's going to have to be Ryan Howard to really step up and carry this team. I'm going to go with Jimmy Rollins. I think it's the whichever team shortstop plays better might end up being the team that wins the series. Jimmy Rollins is such a uh, – he's the catalyst for this team. He can also hit the ball out of the ballpark. Both him and Fercal are both the emotional leaders in the dugout and on the field. I think that the Phillies need Jimmy Rollins not just to get on base but to drive in runs as well because – those guys, a lot of times, as your leadoff hitter goes, especially when he's got pop, then that's an indication of you're getting guys on base, and I think it'll make it easier for the Ethiers and the Mannies and all that kind of stuff when the leadoff guy is on at the top of the order. Right. I mean, anytime you put guys on base, you know, it's supposed to get easier for you as a hitter. The pressure is all out there on the pitcher. Unfortunately, you know, you, you talk about rookies and you talk about how guys handle pressure. Pressure in this situation is what you put on yourself and how you handle that. If you thrive in a situation when there are guys on base, then you can handle pressure. If you don't, Basically, you're just a guy that you know that that does. You're not a money guy at that time. You're not a you're not a pressure player. You, you choke when the chips are down. You know, we need guys that will step up and put the pressure on the other team when the pressure is on the other team. Relax and play baseball when it's your turn to shine. Let's squeeze in one more phone call. Andre's in Beverly Hills. Andre, we got to run pretty fast. But what have you got for Josh and Steve here on pregame Dodger Talk? Hey, Josh and Steve, you're in Philadelphia. Uh, I, I hope the Dodgers are more patient at the plate and we get more runners on base. They were pretty patient against the Cubs. During the regular season, they had their moments when they were. They had the moments when they weren't. I thought they were actually really patient against the Cubs. Well, Steve or, or, or Josh, um, I think the Phillies are a great team. They're a damn good team. Uh, but I, if we can be more patient, we need runners on base. That's what we need. And then our power can come to fruition. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you for the phone call, Andre. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the, the Phillies are a team that are very, very balanced. The one thing that they don't do well is they strike out a lot. And, and I agree with you, Josh. I think the, the, the Dodgers have become a more patient team as the season has worn on and as the, the particular players that are playing in that lineup day in and day out got more settled into that lineup. There's many more patient guys in that lineup than we saw at the beginning of the season, mostly from personnel change, not just a different philosophy. All right, we talked about the guys who are the most impact guys. What concerns you most? going into this series? Um, you, you know, in game one, starting in game one is the effectiveness that Cole Hamels has had not only throughout the season but also against the Dodgers and the possibility of Derek Lowe not having his best stuff. And if he doesn't, this is a team, and, and you can say that for Billingsley, you can say that for Kuroda, anybody here. We saw it in four straight games in this stadium. If you don't show up, with your good stuff against the Phillies, they're going to be a tough team to beat. My concern is the Dodgers' bullpen. Jonathan Broxton has done an admirable job as the closer. When he has struggled, it's been on the road. One of his blown saves was here in Philadelphia. Wasn't necessarily his fault, if I recall. Um, you know, maybe some bloopers, and the defense let him down a little bit. It was, I think it was the Sunday night game. But nonetheless, when he has struggled and had most of his blown saves were on the road, we don't know what we're going to get out of Quo. You're confident with what you've seen out of Corey Wade. He might be the guy you're most confident in right now. Also, you've got three starting pitchers down in the bullpen between Maddox, Kershaw, and McDonald. My biggest concern would be the Dodgers bullpen. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't think that blown save for Broxton counts because I didn't see it. I was in Atlantic City. <laughs> very nice, very nice. All right, coming up next will be the network edition of the pregame show. Charlie Steiner will talk to general manager Ned Coletti. Rick Monday will talk to Dodgers third base coach Larry Boa. First pitch is at 522, the only place you can listen to the iconic and legendary Vin Scully is right here on Talk Radio yeah, 790 baby. KBC. Thanks to Wes, Joe, and Les back in Los Angeles. Thanks to Josh coming in Phil here with us in Philadelphia. Thanks to you, Steve. Thanks to all of the callers. Get ready. Game one, National League Championship Series is about 35 minutes away. Me and Ken Levine will talk to you after the game, and then we will do pregame Dodger talk tomorrow as well as postgame Dodger talk. Enjoy the game.